Assalamu alaikum and I wish you a very good day Mr. Munis Rahman. You have our sincere gratitude Thank for you. taking a few precious minutes out of your hectic schedule to speak with us. For those members of our distinguished audience who are unaware of Mr. Munis's identity, he is the founder of rosy.pk, the largest recruiting website in Pakistan. His services to the commercial sector are not limited to this. He is also the creator of Finja, Pakistan's largest SME digital lending fintech that facilitates unsecured loans for small and micro businesses. Not only that, but Mr. Monis Rahman works full time as the CEO of Dukan.pk, an ecosystem for digital loans and payments for micro, small and medium enterprises and also their supply chains. Your contributions and portfolio are most certainly praiseworthy sir. Today we would love to talk to you about your achievements in what you have contributed to the world of commerce. There is no doubt that you are indeed a pioneer when it comes to revamping economic empowerment. Mr. Monis, could you please kindly maneuver the community through who you are and your journey into becoming one of the most prolific serial entrepreneurs in Pakistan with notable innovative shifts and intricate industry knowledge? Furthermore, give us an insight into your success with Finja, Rosie and Dukan.pk. Since thank you for the opportunity it's a pleasure to be here uh and thank you for the very glamorous introduction uh the reality is that uh, there are very good teams and co-founders and partners uh be you know it's it's impossible for me or one person to do this so i think i've had the yeah. fortune of having some really really good people that i call friends who are my co-founders and the partners on the finja side with kasif and Kamran is there they've been doing an amazing job and here with Kazi leading uh the whole flow with sort of Rosie which is now transitioning uh to a fintech play so Rosie is as you mentioned the largest jobs platform in the country uh it was a very uh uphill task when we started uh, in 2006 and uh 6 or 8 uh and we've been growing since and Rosie is now profitable probably one yeah. of the first a uh, few um internet startups that is profitable and we had a head start we we're also the first um internet startup in the country to ever raise vc funding as well uh but rosie is growing very well we grew by about 70% year on year and we are profitable which is great and we've organically used that uh sort of excess liquidity uh yeah. to launch risk.com which is launching risk financial which is really a financial uh wellness platform for salaried professionals and freelancers which is in beta right now we paid all of our own employees through it last month and it's basically you can think of it as a neo bank for salaried professionals and freelancers which allows um the salaried and freelance class to get credit scored uh, very accurately and opens up uh, opportunities for them through our partner financial institutions for uh halal profits in a savings wallet which accrue daily uh to instant loans against their salary without us having to onboard their employers because we have a direct relationship on them on rosy where we have 10 million yeah. salary professionals mm. and a host of other things that are very exciting so uh that's the journey with rosy it's been very rewarding moving job classifieds from newspaper print to online and now to uh offering additional services to those additional uh those same professionals uh where we can now help them with their financial needs which which they badly need today uh the finja story um you know finja built the first smartphone based wallet in the country the simsim wallet which predates jazz cash and easy pesa which were operating on ussd we pioneered the kyc the onboarding work with state bank we were um a super agent of a bank because licenses hadn't existed back yeah. then so we launched uh the first smartphone based wallet learned a lot from that and very proud that basically that same process is still used today by all the fintech players who are who are now onboarding and what we learned was we wanted to be in the lending business not in the payments business we believe that that's um more impactful and um of course that's where yeah. you make the money so finja became very successful we raised early investment from some great investors and with kasif uh and team just sort of uh aced it over there and we began giving uh loans to SMEs and you know um we're growing that loan portfolio very quickly it's in the tens of thousands and uh, our default rate's 0.4% and now we've got fantastic investors again now even banks are uh on our cap table and we're getting loan books and the processes have gotten stronger so very good growth trajectory there 
And one of the holes that I saw, you know, all of this, it, it's not random. These, 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 these three startups I'm involved with aren't random. They're very much interconnected. Yeah. Um, now, Rosie, with this professional class, the consumer class, which is probably the sweetest sort of segment in the consumer space because you have visibility into, into salary. Um, this is a very prime segment that now risk financial is going after on the back of Rosie, which has, you know, 65,000 employers who use our platform to hire yeah. and to do HR sort of services. And now, you know, uh, going into the fintech space directly with these professionals. And then Finja, which is really uh, moving the needle for SMEs who are starved of capital to grow their businesses because nobody gives loans to SMEs despite the fact that they're 40% of your GDP and 80% of your non-agricultural workforce. They've been neglecting and and, and, and Finja has uh, found a way to, to do these loans very uh, responsibly, reliably with a very low default rate to a segment that desperately needs it and that grows instantly when they can finance their stock and actually sell more. Uh, Dukan was filling the other gap that I quickly saw after COVID, e-commerce was growing, but we had left a very large percentage of the population in the dark cages. So the rich, yeah. um, educated merchants were able to traverse the journey and go online. But unless you have very, spe very specialized knowledge or a lot of money to create an online business for your offline business, you were excluded, which is the majority of the SMEs. So Dukan went in and we created an e-commerce platform. It's an ecosystem which lets any business come online, sell instantly online. We've got payment gateways. We automate a delivery process, the COD, there's a FinTech play, a wallet's inside so you can transact with people that are buying from you and people that you buy from through our online rails. We connect the distributors to a distribution management system. So we are digitizing that entire workflow from uh, the FMCG or a manufacturer to a distributor to the order bookers and the KPOs and the salesmen and down to the retailer who's ordering through our apps. So we've got that whole chain now going and credit scored along with the Shopify type stores who are now leaving Shopify and joining a Dukan uh, platform so that they are able to avail more services like local integrations with the delivery providers, um, e-commerce integrations with the payment providers. We have a SMS and customer CRM, a marketing engine, a CRM uh, that also helps them manage their online ad spend on Facebook and, you know, Google and Instagram. So we've got the local ecosystem interconnected and all of that is being credit scored. All these transactions, cash in, cash out, what they're buying, how much they're buying. We're able to score that and through the wallet, we're able to give them credit. So the goal is very much to plug into the rails of uh, fintechs like Finja or banks to finance uh, transactions that were undocumented and previously high risk in a very reliable way. So getting finance to SMEs and helping them along a digital journey, join the new economy and helping getting digital finance into the hands of the consumer segment, salaried professionals and freelancers, along with giving them financial services. This is a whole ecosystem that yeah. um, I'm very, very passionate about, and that's the ecosystem that these three startups are playing in. All three of these startups have raised VC investment, and now, uh, you know, two of them are starting to operate organically through their own funds. So very, very proud of where we are. Long way to go still. Mr. Monis, honesty mandates that your contributions to the industry and early stage enterprises, as well as the top skill sets you've amassed over the years, are actually truly very commendable. By encouraging startup ecosystems, you have surely navigated your way to the very top and established yourself as a prolific enthusiast in the field of global business. Tell us about your feelings as you reflect on what you have done to help the community achieve success. Well, you know, I think I think we have a long way to go. It was a very lonely journey when uh, when I started doing internet platforms in Pakistan. You know, 2003, there were 1.8 million internet users on DSL. And today yeah. we have about 80% of adults on internet connected smartphones. They all have some sort of a payment instrument, whether it's Jazz Cash, Easy Pesa, bank account. Online payments are growing. The agent networks have gotten strong. Lots of fintechs have come in and they're interconnecting their rails. And as the footprints increase of both SMEs and individuals, there's a lot more we can offer them on the back of that data. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm very grateful to be alive today when everything has come together and um, 
the plumbing, the e-commerce plumbing, the lending plumbing, the financial rails are at a stage where you can really touch a large number of people and they've been trained to use smartphones. And we've, we can take this uh, offline economy of a GDP of about a quarter of a trillion dollars yeah. and move this online and make sure no one gets left behind. And that's really the risk of leaving the poor behind, leaving the blue collar workers behind, leaving the SMEs behind, leaving the salaried class behind. Uh, and uh, that's, that's really the impact that excites me. And I can't say we've achieved it yet, but we're certainly on our journey. And that's a dream. Well, Mr. Monis, as stated earlier, your services to the industry have truly been commendable. I'm sure you are aware of the recent surge and emergence of the tech sector in Pakistan and how Parklaunch has offered a significant platform to bridge the gap between startups and investors. What do you think about Parklaunch's incredible commitment to the tech sector of Pakistan? Furthermore, how much potential do you see for the development of Pakistani tech sector? Yeah, so look, Parklaunch has been instrumental in bringing the community together and organizing the community and having the community interact to bring investors and create more exposure. Um, and there is no other organization like it. And I think the way the team, you know, Ali Fahad and the entire Pot yeah. Launch team have mobilized so quickly and uh, created this community, it's, it's, it's truly invaluable. And it's invaluable, you know, for me, I'll tell you, uh, I attended a Pot Launch event in, uh, in the Bay Area and uh, you know I'm fairly well connected here. I know I know a lot of people. I've been here for a while, but I met so many great entrepreneurs who now I am doing partnerships with and integrating with, and I'm helping you know a few of them with stuff they're doing. A few of them are helping me with what I'm doing. So I think it's 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 really commendable what Apoc Launch has accomplished, and it's playing a pivotal role in the evolution of this ecosystem, and has my full support. We see that a lot of small, mid-sized enterprises are emerging with great likelihood of future growth and are now heading to Park Launch. What's that one advice that you would provide them with that would certainly prove to be very beneficial? Well, I think, you know, the biggest uh, advantage uh, of the Park Launch platform is really networking, bringing yeah. really cool people together. And it's a very lonely journey, you know, when you're trying to move offline to online, a digital economy, startups, fundraising, cap tables, uh, and uh, the sort of um, interconnects that the Park Launch platforms can make are valuable. So if if people are going to the conference, which is going to be ha happening soon, I believe in January or so in Dubai, yeah, yeah. Um, really uh, would advise them to figure out who else is coming, what they do, and make sure you get enough meetings on the sideline to fully explore what you can do. And there's a tendency of startups to go because they want to raise funding. Well, yeah, it's nice to raise funding, go for that. But also look at other startups in the space and interconnect your ecosystems with theirs and things will grow much faster. It makes you much more investable as you're showing hyperscale on the back of ecosystem integrations, uh, as well as, you know, there's also uh, a financial advantage as you scale and you grow and you make more money, it becomes easier to raise funding. So my advice is to definitely very actively explore partnerships and meeting other startups in addition to conversations with investors.